Yo, welcome back to Genshin Impact. I'm so confused what that thing over here is, the glowing thing on the horizon. In the last episode, we were in the cave and we met the neighbor of uh, Hapasia and then we got a hallucination or something and we were suddenly in a big tree and now we need to make some food by the fireside after we got out of our vision and apparently Hapasia has had visions like that too. Cook up some dishes over the fire. Cause where else? All done. Let's <laughs> use the empty box that Tainari gave us since we already watched it. Oh, it smells amazing. And the box is a nice touch too. Let's go serve this up and start eating with Hapasia. Give Hapasia the food you made for her. Where is she? Oh, <laughs> didn't know how deep this cave was. Oh, oh, oh. Gimme. Oh, tomato. Wow. When life gives you tomatoes, you give them to a page. Are you already finished cooking? Mmm, smells delectable. I'm truly thankful whenever I can enjoy a proper meal like this. Uh, cooking really isn't my forte. Uh, here you go. It looks like a monster dish to me. Oh, after a delicious meal together, you tell a page about connecting with Ermin, so... Even though everything you mentioned was in Tainari's letter, it's still hard to believe you were able to connect with Ermin's soul immediately after smelling Spiritborn Eel for the first time. I'm just It took special. me nearly three years before I could do so. And everyone at the Academia even lauded me as a genius. You should know that some researchers spent their entire lives without ever successfully connecting with Ermin's soul as you have. So why does this incense allow people to connect to Ermin's soul? The ingredients used to make spirit born ale primarily consist of plants created by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. These special ingredients are conducive to heightening our senses to the Dendro Archon's power. Since the root of the Dendro Archon's power lies within Ermensoul, we can occasionally tap into her powers to peer into the depths of the Earth. Uh, sorry, I think I understand. Naturally, anyone who can establish a connection with Ermensoul in their first ever attempt must be a person of great understanding. Hmm, makes sense. But Paimon's got a question. Why was he sensitive to the smell of those plants for such a long time? That was primarily due to his body's unique constitution. Stimulated by the incense, he could perceive the Dendro Archon's power and experience the sensory overload, hence the adverse reactions. Taking in any scent similar to the ingredients of Spirit Born Ale would cause adverse effects. Not to worry, though. It appears you've already fully recovered. Thank God. Technically, your body should still be sensitive to the powers of the Dendro Archon, but unless you're using intentional meditation techniques, the scent of Spirit Born Ale should no longer trigger such reactions. Whew, well that's a relief. I must admit, I am quite envious of your abilities. Even if it meant suffering from pounding headaches for the rest of my life, I'd consider it worthwhile so long as I could connect with Ermin Soul at will. Whoa! You're really serious about this whole thing, aren't you? <laughs> I am a researcher, after all. As a member of the Ritaoist Darshan at the Academia, my main area of research is the stars and their connection to the fate of living beings. But there is still so much we don't know, especially regarding the mysteries that lie in the starry skies. Which is why I must turn to the all-knowing Ermensoul for answers. If only my perception wasn't so limited. Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee that my every attempt to attune with Ermensoul will be successful, or that doing so will leave my consciousness intact. I am currently in the stage of training known as Satyavada Life. Many researchers in Sumeru have lost their minds while seeking to attune with Ermensoul during this stage. Sages have said that Ermensoul contains divine knowledge, and touching such knowledge without the proper preparations and abilities will only lead to one's mind caving in on itself. That's why we meditate alone. We need to ensure that our minds will be calm while minimizing the possibility of involving anyone else. 
Whoa! So knowledge from Ermin's soul can be super dangerous! Aren't you afraid of the risk, Hapasia? <laughs> no. Of course I do. Especially during nights that are pitch black with no moonlight. And dead silent without even the sound of insects. However, I've been feeling better as of late. I don't get as scared anymore knowing that I have a little neighbor living nearby. I believe that being able to see them is a sort of blessing from the Dendro Archon. <laughs> but what's strangest of all is that they're clearly an envoy of the God of Wisdom herself. And they have the curious power to make people dream. What's so strange about that? It doesn't sound so out of place for a divine being, does it? Well, it's strange because nearly nobody in Sumeru can ever dream. Oh. Oh. Big L. Is that true? Big L. <laughs> yes. Well, to an extent. Only children can dream in Sumeru. Adults, however, never do. The sages say that wisdom implies rationality. But that which occurs in dreams is often neither rational nor logical. Reminds me of the dream I saw from the Ar Aranara. It was a big chaotic mess. Is that a flower? Which I don't know what this is, but... Um... Yes. If one struggles with anxieties, those emotions could influence their dreams. Oh shit, here we go. The fact that the people of Sumeru do not have dreams is seen as a blessing by the sages. They believe that Greater Lord Rukadevata, the God of Wisdom, is keeping us away from the foolish delusions you encounter in your sleep. I was born into a family of scholars in Sumeru City. Ever since I was a child, my parents would always tell me that I'll know I've grown up once I stop dreaming. I studied hard, Enrolled as a student in the academia, and went on to become a researcher. <sighs> sure enough, I never dreamed again. But then, on the day I scared the little Aranara, I suddenly saw a dream again. It was incredible. Though I don't exactly remember what I saw, I clearly recalled the feeling. I suddenly felt like I was a child again. Back then... I was foolish and ignorant as any youth would be, but I was free of fear. Maybe dreaming isn't as bad as we've made it out to be. <clears throat> uh, just be sure not to speak of this if you travel to Sumeru City. They'll look at you as if you've lost your wow, mind. Wow, a city full of judgmental so, people. <laughs> do you have any thoughts about the things he saw when he connected with Ermansul? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any answers as of now. All I can say is that what you saw is a memory contained within Ermin's soul itself. Hmm. World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? Uh, if only I could ascend past Satyavada life and begin Paripurna life. What? I might have some more answers for you. I don't know what any of this means. If you two are ever in the area again, please be sure to come and see me. Wish you luck in your endeavors, and thanks for talking to me this time. <laughs> There's no need to be thanking you. <laughs> you two are my saviors. Besides, I'm already looking forward to tasting some more of your cooking. <laughs> you were doing the bare minimum. You continue chatting before settling down for a good night's rest. Now that we know Hapasia is alright, and had the chance to ask her some questions, Paimon thinks it's about time to head back to Gundarvaville. Okay. Will we ever even reach Sumeru City? I don't know. Heading out, I see? If there's anything else you'd ever like to ask about, you know where to find me. Uh, about Ermansoul. Sumeru researchers use Spirit Borneal to assist them in connecting with Ermansoul to extract knowledge from it. Though the process can be risky, we believe that the knowledge gained is worth it. Unfortunately, I cannot help you understand your dream. At least not yet. I'm still learning how to tune to the depths of Ermansoul myself. I hope that I'll be able to ascend past Satyavada life and gain deeper insights. Heading out, I see? If there's anything else you'd ever like- Even though that little neighbor of mine was able to induce a state of dreaming, I doubt they were able to control the actual contents of the dream. The end of your dream seemed quite terrifying. Perhaps there's something that's troubling you deep inside? Oh, for sure. Not to worry, though. I'm sure you'll be able to handle whatever comes your way in the real world. I don't think so. As someone from Sumeru who cannot dream, I needn't ever worry about nightmares. But lately, I've started to feel that I'm somehow missing something without dreams. <laughs> it's a little hard to explain. That's what happens when you don't believe Heading in the multiverse. Out, if there's anything, take care. Do remember to come visit anytime you're in the area. 
I would be happy to chat with you. Thank you. And now I'm heading back to Gundar for Will. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's see if Kale wants to talk to us today. Or like how she's feeling on this beautiful day. Sorry, I had Monokuma's voice stuck in my head for a second. Yeah, I love fast traveling. Would be cool if we could have like a character who could like fly in a different way, like fly in a way like Ayaka can like sprint in the water if we would have like flying abilities in the future. That would be cool. Think about it, Tainari. Refusing to join is tantamount to burying your head in the sand. I understand that you're a forest watcher and that it's your duty to combat the effects of withering zones. But isn't it evident that such work is not a lasting solution to the problem? As Sage Kage clearly stated, your presence and guidance in Sumeru City is pivotal in finding a cure for Ermansul. How could you possibly refuse? Keep your emotions in check, Gulam. Let's at least listen to Tainari's reason for declining. We're here to invite him to the Academia, not to cause a scene. Sage Kage, I am truly honored that you came here in person, but I'm afraid I must still decline your invitation. I am merely a forest watcher. How could the great minds of the Harabatat have any need of someone like me? <laughs> well, it turns out that your refusal letter had some implications on your master's reputation. He is a renowned sage of the Immorta, after all. So now I've come here in his stead. I see. Huh. And I figured that given his temper, he would come here and berate me personally. Tainari, your master is an integral part of this effort, and now he requires your assistance. And what exactly does my master need of me, Sage Kage? <laughs> You'll know once you've arrived in Sumero City, that is. Hell yeah, we're finally going. And how long will I be required to stay? Forever. Uh, there's no definite answer as of now. Forever, I said. Do you mean to tell me that despite coming all the way here to Kandarvaville, you still can't answer the questions I laid out in the letter to my master? If that's the case, then I'm afraid I cannot give you a definite answer either. Tainari, but you... Uh, so be it. Come, Gulam, we're leaving. Oh, this guy had a new haircut of neck. New, uh, cannot talk! New haircut for NPC models. He looks like Gentaro from Hypnosis Mike. Here I am. Uh, Tainari, what was that all about? It's nothing. Some people from the Academia wanted me to go to... Sumeru City to assist them with a project, but I had to refuse on account of all my responsibilities here. But all that can wait. How did things go with Hapasia? It was quite the eventful trip, but the main thing is that she's safe and sound. She answered a bunch of questions for us, too. Very good. Now that the Traveler has made a full recovery, there shouldn't be any reason for you to tarry here longer. I assume you will be heading to Sumeru City, correct? Hell yeah, finally. Right. Oh my god. We Lesser Lord Kusanali and ask her for advice. Um, do you have any idea on how we can find in her? In a tree? Maybe not in a city? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any advice for oh, you there. Oh, man. Well, do you at least know anyone we can try asking in Sumeru City? Hmm, let me think. My trips to Sumeru City have been fairly short, and most of my acquaintances are researchers. How about this? I'll write you a letter of introduction that you can give to a researcher I know. He's from the Amorta Darshan and is adept at gathering information. Asking him might prove worth. Is it all high thumb? Also, when you enter Sumeru City, you'll probably end up receiving something like this item here. I'm not sure if it will ever come in handy for you, but maybe you can give it a try. Oh, what is it? It's called an Akasha Turtle. Oh, that your thing. It's a tool produced by the Academia that utilizes the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Some say that this very item is the basis of Sumeru's reputation as the City of Wisdom. Needless to say, this device and its usage fall under the Academia's expertise. So I'll leave it to them to show you how to use it. Great! Next up, Sumeru City! Uh, oh, but wait... Before 
for that. We need to say goodbye to Kale. That's right. <laughs> Tainari, we have something important to say to Kale before we leave. Is she doing better now? Yes, she's doing much better. After being confined to her bed all this time, I thought a little walk would do her some good. Last I saw her, she was taking the path towards the North Crossing. She knew you two would be leaving soon, so she must have wanted to see you off. Thanks, Tainari. All right, let's go! Farewell. And good luck to you both. Hell yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'm very excited to finally see the city. That's why I was waiting with the exploration until the story leads us here. Kale is waiting at the northmost crossing of Gundarvaville. You should be able to find her there. Don't you worry about Kale. I'll look after her. I'll find a way to understand the relationship between the withering and her disease. Kale is waiting at the northmost crossing. It seems there's a major project underway at the Academia, and my master has also joined the effort. Who is your master? But I can't afford to leave Gundarvaville now. Things are not going well here in the rainforest, and Kale needs someone to watch over her. Besides, I was never one for all the pomp and circumstance of life at the Academia. Given that my master hasn't come to give me an earful personally, tells me that my presence is not as sorely needed as they make it out to be. In fact, the letter he sent to me was uncharacteristically polite. <laughs> Kale is waiting at the North I know, I know. Crossing. Farewell, Traveler. I know, I know. Thank you, thank you. I do have a name, you know. Okay. I think I'll start oh, there she questions. is. Oh, oh, okay, there I go, I guess. What I wanted to say was... I have very high expectations of the Academia. <laughs> so I hope it's not just gonna be some silly little building that doesn't even look as tall as you would imagine Academia to look like. And I hope that we can enter it at least in some sorts. Otherwise, I would be pretty disappointed because all this time before we reach Sumeru, everyone was always talking very high and very big about the Academia. So I hope it's gonna uh, do its part and look as special as the naked ought to be. I've been waiting for you two. I, uh... Well, uh... <sighs> Never mind. I guess I should just wish you two a safe and successful journey. Same goes to you. Thanks for waiting here just to see us off, Kale. We're headed to Sumeru City. Uh, please take care of yourself. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. My condition won't be getting in the way of my duties. I want to be a forest ranger after all. It's up to me and the others to protect the rainforest here. And, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I should have told you both about my condition when we first met. I just wanted you two to treat me as a normal friend, not some girl that needs your sympathy. But I guess now I understand that the most important thing is for friends to be genuine with one another. There's no need to apologize, Kale. We should be thanking you for trusting us enough to be your friends and sharing your past with us. We're probably still gonna worry about your condition, but that's because we're friends and we care about you. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, before you leave, I have something for you. Oh? What is it? It's my recipe for pita pockets. I told you that I'd give you a copy, remember? My handwriting is a little, uh, messy, so please don't laugh. Yay! Thanks, Kale! Now we can eat those scrumptious little pitas whenever and wherever we like! I hope that whenever you eat them, you'll both remember your time here in Gandarvaville. Of course we will. Well then, I, Trainee Forest Ranger Kale, bid you both farewell. Please visit Gandarvaville again. The rangers will always be ready to assist you here. Her voice and the way she talks reminds me a lot of Amber. Just with higher pitch. I pitched. hope you have a safe trip to Sumeru City and get to meet the Dendro Archon there. Oh, thank you. How are you feeling now? I'm much better now. I'll be back on patrol again starting tomorrow. Even though I'm not quite ready to help Master clear the withering zones yet, there are still plenty of other tasks for me to handle. Oh, and Traveler, if you ever see Amber again during your travels, please don't mention my illness to her, okay? Okay. Mm Amber knows about my case of Elazar and what's happened in my past. But, I haven't told her about my condition getting worse. I guess I just don't want her to worry about me. If the need arises, I'll tell her about it myself. Alright, we understand, Kale. I hope you have a safe trip to Sumeru right, City. See you later! Be sure to come back often. Even though Master didn't admit it, I'm sure he wants to see you again. Oh, I'm sure as well. Alright, we can finally go to the city! And I'm walking the wrong way, apparently. So, I need to climb over this stone. 
it do be a stone dome. <sighs> All right, I'm very, very excited to see this. I haven't seen much. I only know. What's up ahead? Oh, look, someone's been staring behind the chairs. <laughs> Let's go save him. Who? Where in the who? Where? These aren't hilly trolls. I don't see any hilly trolls, in fact. Paimon, are you alright? There's supposed to be a Dendroculus somewhere here, but I don't... I don't see it. I bet it's in a cave. I bet it's in here? Huh. Hello there. And there is the city. There are hilly trolls, but no one's being surrounded by them, so they weren't talking about this one. Oh no, I walked into a side quest. Ah, what's over there? Stay away, you nasty mushrooms. Hey, Traveler, that person over there seems to be in trouble. We've got to help. Oh man. Help the person who's being attacked. See, at least I've seen memes about this. Look at this. Sumaru NPCs can do damage. They're not just standing there in a fetal position as they were saying to uh, Reckless Paladin. Reckless Paladin, not Paladin. They're literally fighting. Come on, do, do some damage. She could literally do this on her own. She doesn't even need me. Oh my god, that's so cool. Go get him. I want. Why does she have an axe as, an, as a weapon, but we don't? That would be so cool, please. I really hope they will add more weapon types in the future. Can I attack her? She also has a health bar, wow. Oh, you were a big help, thanks. As you can see, I'm a forest watcher here. As for my name, it's Rana. I'm the Traveler. Paimon! Paimon's Paimon! You're from a different nation! I see. Mm. You aren't dressed like inhabitants of the forest. Now do you look like you're from the desert, but your clothes do have good breathability and are suitable for traveling in Sumeru. Ah, uh, since Rana is a forest watcher? She should know about Kale, right? Hey Traveler, have you met that kid? Kale hasn't been very well, but she still works hard to protect the forest and eliminate, eliminate the withering. But she's with a trustworthy senior, the one with fluffy ears, so she, sh she should be fine. What ears are you talking about? It's, is it Amber? <laughs> go, go, Bear Bunny! There's no way it's Amber. <laughs> um, anyway, a forest watcher's duty is to protect the forest, assist travelers, and provide guidance. As the two of you might have noticed lately, the forest has been less than ideal. The fungi and beasts have been growing aggressively, then there's the withering. How about I escort both of you? My, my patrol route will pass through Vimaro Village next, and smooth sailing from there to either Port Ormos or Sumer City. Oh, sure, let's go. Okay, I'll keep both of you safe. Oh, so did we have to walk into this? I think so. Woodland Encounter. Aran Aranyaka Part 1. Uh, let me look at my quest menu. What is Aranyaka? Oh, Chapter 2. Go to Sumer City. Okay, so this was supposed to happen. That is very convenient. Thank you. Since you're a forest watcher, Rana, you must be very familiar with the woods, right? Uh, I've lived around here for years and I know every tree in the forest, really. But the land's becoming... Thank you. It's only been a few days and a new withering zone has popped up already, so close to the main road too. A withering zone again? Uh, we had a lot with Tainari before. Tra Traveler and Tainari disposed of a withering zone before? I won't go into how dangerous it is then. Regardless, let me mark down the location on radius of effect for now. After I take you to Vimara village, I'll go to Gandharva well and bring Tignari over to help. No need, Rana, just leave it to us. No way, the Rotoring Stone is lethal. Even veteran forest watchers wouldn't approach it unless absolutely necessary. I'm built different. He can manipulate the elements and he should somewhat, and he should somewhat starve of the Rotoring's effect. Uh, now that I think about it, you did show some ability when fighting off the fungi. But still, you shouldn't do that. We can't have you injured by the withering after coming all this way. Don't worry, Rana. The Jibala is proven to be very reliable in the many encounters throughout the journey. <laughs> be right back. 
<sighs> Alright, I understand. I'll wait here. If it's too much to handle, get out of there to call for help, and I'll be there. You could try to deal some damage together with me. I'll wait here. If it's too much to handle, get out of there. Call help for me, and I'll be there. Thank you, thank you. Go on! Collect the underground and attack the blittering thing. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Charge attacks or aim shots. I know, but first off, I need to defeat the enemies because otherwise they are just causing me trouble standing in my way. Okay, wait. And it's gone. Um, I would like some new dendro- Okay, here it is. Oh, goodness gracious, I was confused for a second here. Shit. Quake! Embrace the ice! Rana, would you like to step in and help me, maybe? Wait. Here we go. It's been done. Wow, this is impressive, right? You're amazing. Incredibly amazing. <laughs> Thanks. You're getting too excited, Rana. Uh, pardon me, um, Traveler, uh, Mr. You have to be so formal. Okay, so I wonder if you guys are interested in joining us. I can vouch for you both. I have greater things to do. But thank you. It would be great to get powerful, dedicated people like the Traveler and Paimon on our side. With you guys, we can better control the spread of the withering. Sure, you're probably not familiar with the woods, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. <laughs> clam down. <laughs> clam down. Clam or calm down? This is a typo, I don't know. Oh yeah, speaking- Speaking of the forest, Paimon's got a question. Do you remember the wondrous creatures we saw before? Wondrous creatures? You quickly described the wondrous creatures you met previously. Oh, they sound like the mythical Arana. Small, round, plant-like fairies. They are the denizens of the woods and guardians of trees. But we generally dismiss them as just a tale. You sure those weren't just some shroom bears you saw? Shroom bears? Yeah, that's an animal you see only in the forest of Sumeru. Oh. They're around green beasts that live in the forest. We'd use them to find precious mushrooms. <laughs> Sounds delicious. I don't think they're the same. Anyways, in all my years in the woods, I've never seen an Arana Aranara. However, you can ask the kids after you get to Vimara Village. They seem to be very into the legend of Aranara. Although children always try to hide their thoughts from adults, you can read their minds like a book, just like Byman. Hey, that's because we're buddies and know each other very well. Sure thing. That's it. You got moves. First, you learned it. Uh. We ran across a lot of things in the journey, so we got to learn how to fight. <sighs> I see that must have been hard. Going back in a second, I just need a teleport point. That's over here. Did you stop talking? Oh, this is a Maravid. Let me say hi to Grandpa Ama Amadia. <gasps> Give me a second, I walked in the wrong direction. Hold on. I'm coming. <gasps> Just wait for me. Do you even know there was another village before the city? But we will see in a second, I think. Is it down here? No. I still don't know what these flying things are over here. And I'm very confused about that. <laughs> Anyways, any slaves, we're going to Sumeru City. Where is the village he was talking about? Vimara Village. Is that where we have to go? Oh, oh, did she just say, did she just leave us? Am I missing something because I didn't go to Vimara Village? But my quest tells me to go this way, so... Uh, I should be right. Oh my god, we have wave riders over here. Yeah, I've seen it on a map before, but I was confused about it. I'm just gonna activate it. Did she leave us now, or...?
Oh no, I'm gonna check in on Rimara Village for a second just to see if we missed out on some dialogue and then I'm gonna teleport right away. Um, Rana? Ra oh yeah, we did miss on, out on something, okay. I'm back, Grandpa Amadea. Rana, you know the job of a forest watcher is important, but you should come around more often. Yeah, I know. I patrol the forest so that those tiger cubs can hang out in the woods safely. It was just a mess right now. There are tigers in Vimara Village? Real tigers? Tiger cubs refers to Eye of Amadea's friends. But the way, by the way, your voice, I don't think I've ever met you. Do we have visitors? Oh, he's blind. Oh yes, Grandpa Amadea, these two are. Rana gives Amadea a brief rundown. I see, welcome to Vimara Village, and thanks for helping Rana out. I plan to form a night watch, getting Alfonso, Bahram, and Aurelius to safeguard the perimeter as a group. That's a great plan, it's for the good of the children after all. Something happened to Vimara Village lately. Why could it be related to the round plant like creatures we saw before? What are you talking about? They sound like a cabbage from your description. It's okay, we're just a little uneasy from some recent events. Spent my whole life in Vimara Village and never saw anything like this. <sighs> I won't bore you with my stories. Please watch over Rana. She's always been a troublemaker since she was little. She got lost in the woods once when she was seven or eight for a couple of days. Hey now, Grandpa Amadea. Fine, fine. You'd be a good host now, huh, Rana. Don't let her go, son. For sure. Grandpa Amadea is getting old and his eyes are starting to fail him, but he's really nice. This is your side quest now? What is going on? You're back, Rana. Anything new? Who's the one beside you? I, I met this guy before, before powerful trouble. How about you? Caught anything good? You know it. When you see these kids, tell them a feast is waiting. You interested? And will the visit try us? Not sure. Maybe later. Follow Rana. We are going very slowly. And now I know that it is a side quest after all, is it? Go to Sumeru City. Our run Yanka part one. I'm back. I'm back, Alfonso. I see. Who's that with you? Allow me to introduce these two impressive travelers who have helped me a lot. And this here is Alfonso, just about the most dependable person in Vimara Village. You flatter me, Rana. Anyway, nice to meet you too, and thanks for looking after Rana. You don't look like a local Alfonso, you traveler too? <laughs> You're an experienced traveler indeed. Saw right through me at a glance. I came as an apprentice for Fante, but I ended up staying because I really like it here. And it's been years since Alfonso's practically one of us now. Anyways, how are those kids? They're not running around, are they? I mean, it's not a good time right now. They're in the village waiting for you to return, after Cabos came back. Is it really okay to talk about that before a guest? Maybe we should talk about it later. Is it something important? We can come back later. Don't worry, they saved my life after all. <laughs> I fight very well. <laughs> uh, yes, very impressive. But Paimon thinks you're a good enough fighter to get it done yourself. Paimon means don't you run into wild animals a lot as a, for as a forest watcher? Oh, that is true. However, time is left to me. You saved me time, so you saved my life. Anyway, some of the children in Mavara village have gone missing recently. That warrants much more than just anyway. <laughs> True that. This is a very serious problem. Have you ever notified the sheriff in Sumeru City yet? Is there anything we can help with? Wait, wait, wait. Just listen to me. The missing children always come back in a few days. Though they don't remember what happened. Oh, dreams as well? Uh, I'd run up a search party every time. Sometimes you'd run into wild animals, sometimes the withering sun, other times outside is obviously too tough for us to handle. However, we could never find the kids since the woods are simply too big to search, even for Anna. Yeah, but in the end, they would suddenly return when no one was paying attention and couldn't recall anything when asked. Paimon does that too. Wow, well, so it's normal for kids. Hey, quit it, you two! <laughs> Sorry to digress. Do you remember nothing at all? I'm not sure. I think they're just someone who tells adults. <sighs> Even though I'm only a few years older than them. Still, that's pretty concerning. Right, so I've been patrolling nearby recently, looking out for anything unusual. That's also why I just spoke to Amadaya before about forming a night watch. I also asked Alfonso to keep an eye on the kids. Sorry. It's okay. I'd be more concerned if they actually stay put. I'm going to have a word with I 
I also felt lighter. It's his job to watch after Carver's and Sudabe. I ought to take it easy for a while, Your Honor. You're the only one who can get through the, through the kids. It's dangerous outside lately, but during some society, you got the Fatui from Sishnaya with their armed mercenaries operating in forests if something goes wrong. Fatui? I know I'll be careful, but I should be on the ball because it's dangerous. But even if you could deal with the wild animals, the Fatui are more than you can handle, Ra oh. But even if you could deal with the wild animals, the Fatui are more than you can handle, huh, Rana? Sounds like Alfonso knows the Fatui very well. Oh, I learned about them from the travelers shuttling, shuttling between Simmer City and Port Almos. It's Rana. Rana is big with Alfonso too. Hey, here comes trouble. Anyway, I'll think it over, Rana. I picked a bunch of starshroom for you, Rana. Uh, Iofem, did you promise me to never wander outside the village? The Rishbalan Rishba Raja will come and get you if you don't behave. I'm big there and I'm not scared of anything. Did you catch the, the gator, Raja, this time, Rana? I want to hear some tales from the woods, Rana. Uh, well, I didn't see the gator, Raja, this time. But I brought you a golden lion and a silver... Silver what, though? Um... Uh, a whopper flower? What does Pippin have to do with whopper flowers? Silver dusk bird! Silver press! Super silver specter! Uh, calm down, Pippin. <laughs> Alright, stop picking on them. The travel on... Alright, stop picking on them. Travel and Pippin are my friends. <sighs> Pippin is not going to get mad at kids. Regardless, you know a lot of animals. That's right. Rana would tell us stories every time she's back. She told us about a huge, huge gator last time and the Sumter Beast Lord. Uh, and the Rishbol and Raja that couldn't be caught. That's right, and I will come and get you if you don't behave. Oh no! Everyone in the village sure seems to get along. Hope the children can stay safe. Anyway, my friends, you came from a place far, far away. Why don't we let them tell a story today? Uh, sure, I guess. Sure, I should assume it has been a very eventful one. Yay, let's all go to Rana's house. The last one there is a specter. Be careful going over the bridge and fall into the water. Let's go. Ah, peaceful and wholesome. Follow the children, Teresa. Let's go, we can't, we can't fall behind. Oh, who's this guy? And Granny. I like the music. So broad, you go to bridge, you might fall into the water. Mind, not mind if I do. Oh, the music is so sweet. <laughs> oh, Ron has brought some wizards. Welcome. I'm gonna be the first one. I won. You old stinky specter losers now. Well, oh, just kidding. I don't know where Rana's house is. Oh, is it this one? Did I win? Did I win? Did I win? <laughs> I won! <laughs> These kids are faster than birds could fly! Ugh. You guys are getting good at running. It's going to worry me sick if you run away someday. We won't run if Rana's here! I'm going to marry Rana when I grow up! <laughs> Aww. Wait, did you promise to marry me, liar? <laughs> I will sort this out later. You'll meet more people when you grow up. People more impressive and better than me. For instance, Mr. Blount here is Mr. Blount, excuse you, is way mightier than me and has met many great people along their journey from far away, right? <laughs> they are all travel and non-binary. It's true, such as Paimon. Hey. Have you been traveling a long time? Rana said you tell us stories. Uh I've got a lot of stories. You got a tiger cups then? I have a meeting to go to. You kids you kids be good to him and stay put till I come back. Okay. And we're babysitters now. Wow. Two days into a new nation and now I'm getting left to deal with the kids. Great. Alright, on to the stories. You're eye of him, right? What story would you like to hear? Stories about dragons. Alfonso said they were ancient and very powerful. Sea monsters. I heard there's a lot of big sea monsters in the sea. I oh, want stories about a distinguished lady who is smart and powerful. You all want different stories? Hey, isn't there someone that knows stories of the eight-headed hydra, silver-haired banshees, and the wicked abyss dragon? Pime thinks everyone would be happy if that person was here. How about this? We know a lot of stories and we'll tell them all. You can ask him about the mysterious creatures while at it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure, these kids might know things that's all done and about how they went missing. 
As a trade, I owe him canvas and suitable. He'll tell us what you know, too. Sure. All right, story time. Anyway, tell kids a story in a way that they'll find fun. Talk to the children. I want dragon stories. I found someone told me they exist in the world. He said a huge evil dragon lives in a place called Monster. Oh, yeah. We know the story. So what is the dragon like? Alfonso said it's terrifying and pillages Mondstadt. Eh, uh, how'd your payment put it? Um, this is a tale of heroes triumphing. It's a tale of friends resolving their misunderstanding. And here it goes a long, long time ago in a kingdom far away. A big dragon with huge wings and sharp fangs laid in deep slumber. When the dragon woke up, it saw the whole world change. Growl, the dragon announced. I'm mad now and I'm going to wreck your little houses and keeps. The dragon wasn't actually bad, but was tricked by an evil sorcerer into thinking everyone's bad. But one day, two travelers arrived. Paimon tells the story of the Sura Blue Dragon, and Whale really engages the kids. So, with everyone's help, the travelers removed the curse from the dragon and helped it find its friend. Wow, I have thought dragons were terrible and would eat some to beasts and people. How big is the dragon though? Big like a house? Big enough to swallow Paimon and one, big enough to swallow the Mara Village in one bite. Wow, if that's true, we can fly around inside a dragon's belly. Wait, get, when it gets hot, we'll go to Snishnaya that Alfonso talked about, where it snows. When it's rainy season, we'll go to Valuka where Granny Shahid is from. Valuka? Is that in Nathlan? Oh, that's a desert. Anyway, when I grow up, I want to travel everywhere like you two. That's right. Travel and make friends, just like how we travel and got to know you. Can we ask you a few questions, I of them? Uh, uh, ask about the mysterious creatures in the forest. Rana told us they could be Ar Aranara. Have you, have you heard anything about them, I of them? Uh, about that? No, I heard nothing about Aranara. They look like cat. They look like shroom boars. <laughs> no, they don't. I said so you've seen Aranara before. Actually, I've heard about them in Granny Shahid's stories. Uh, let's, can we ask Granny Shahid? No. All right, we drop it. Rana and others are very worried about your kids, I of them. Have you gotten lost in the woods recently? No, I know the woods very well. There's no way I can get lost. But Sudabe and Kavos did. Everyone was sorry, but not me. Because I know Aranara would take them home. Aranara? Who's... Arana, who's that? Uh, I mean, Rana. Rana would find them and take them home. That's suspicious, but Paimon doesn't think we can find out more. Maybe Rana is one of the Aranara. Uh, let's change the topic. Why are you interested in dragon stories, I have them? I want to be great like a dragon, and I can help Rana and Alfonso. They work very hard. It always takes a long time for Rana to patrol the woods. Alfonso goes out there when no one's looking too. I can help them as soon as I grow up, so they can spend more time in the village. Paimon gets it. You're a great kid, I of them. Alright. Talk to kid number two. See, monsters, I heard there's a lot of... A lot of big... Oh, can't serve. A lot of big and peculiar monsters in the sea. Like the fish that is the largest an island or the squid as long as a river. And the story about the puppets and the whale. Also the turtle carrying an elephant on his back. You have a lot of stories. Why the interest in sea monsters? When I grow up I want to be a sailor going on seven voyages and discovering unsure the islands and lands. That's why I wanted to learn about sea monsters. This way I can defeat them in one day. You ran a... We went across the grass of some pirates. We ran across some pirates before, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Did they find any treasures, any tales of adventure? Not sure, but Paimon does have a sea monster story. Ahem. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a sea serpent with many hearts living in the ocean. I was taller than a mountain when he stretched out its neck. The serpent didn't behave, so God trapped it on the sea floor under rocks to prevent it from marking waves, from making raids and destroying the harbor. After a long while, the serpent woke up and crept. Curse the despicable god! I'll wash all your houses and treasures out to the sea and make them mine! Urgh. Then it rolls up to higher than the mountains and caused a tidal wave. Paimon tells the story of the people in the flying castle fighting the sea hydra together in a way that really engages the kids. And that was how everyone worked together to defeat the serpent and protect the city. So the serpent has been defeated? What a shame, I wanted to beat him myself when I grew up. That's a spirit. Of course, an old eye of him suitor. I have to be stronger than them so I can protect them. I promise to tell you what I know after hearing your story. So what would you like to know? About the mysterious creatures in the woods. Oh, there's a lot of them in the forest. Like the legendary Santa Beast Lord, 
isn't like any ordinary symptom beast and will attack intruders. And the rich bull and Raja that snatches bad children away. But I'm old enough to know Rana made that up to scare the kids. They all sound interesting, but we'd like to know about the Ran plant like fairies called Aranara. Do you know about them? Oh, Aranara? i never heard of them, but I know about the Gator Raja. It's a very, very big Gator in the woods that has lived for a long, long time and is very, very cunning. There was this one time. It didn't sound convincing. I feel like they're friends with the Aranara things and try to hide them. Uh, never mind. Why wow, I can't believe there's a Gator like that. Do you go to the woods often, Kavis? Yeah, used to, but not lately since they got lost in their ones. At least that's what the adults say. Uh, that's what the adults said? Because I don't remember anything. I went to the forest to see my friend and share stories about my sister. Then I just can't remember what happened. When I came to my senses, I was back in the village already. My father helped me tightly while everyone was around me, asking me if I was hurt, hungry, or thirsty, and he wouldn't let me go there again. Uh, you want to, you want, you went to the forest to see a friend? And you have a friend in the forest? Doesn't everyone live in the village? Yeah, a friend too. Everyone lives in the forest. Taught us many things, like what wild fruits we shouldn't eat and which trees wouldn't let us climb on them. Mm, so what is that friend like? Well, uh... I can tell you, I'm sorry. Although we're friends, I made a pact with Suda Ben I have... Paimon. <laughs> Paimon guesses it's a secret between the kids. I think we just hit a dead end. Okay, we understand. Now be a good boy and don't play outside the village. Of course, that'll be a good big party to Sudo Ben IFM. I wasn't sure how to voice the kid because I didn't know if it was a girl or a guy, but uh, talk to. <laughs> Go to Sumeru City! <laughs> no. What story would you like to hear, Sudo Ben? Any story but do. But I'd like it to do have a distinguished lady who is smart and powerful, where she doesn't have to be a distinguished lady, but the character's got to be determined and loving. Like Princess Cinnamon who left her palace of a tiger in the fairy tale. That's a lot of demands. Well, Paimon knows several ladies who fit that description, but somehow they all have connections to Electro. True that, oh my god. Elect Electro is good, it makes plants stronger and bear more fruit. You know a lot, Sudo Bear, so where should Paimon start? A place for a wedding, was a general and a hit and a, sh general and a shrine leader. Oh, Lisa or Yae? Hmm. Lisa. We haven't heard about Lisa in a long time. Paimon can go with the story of Miss Lisa, but Paimon prefer another one. Sorry? Um, in a place far away on the other side of the ocean, there was a lady general and a shrine- What do we have against Lisa now? And a shrine maiden. Oh yeah, making the shrine maiden a priestess and the general queen should help you understand better. Oh, I thought the general was Goro. <laughs> are they both distinguished ladies? Yeah, they both are! <laughs> Miss Hina? <laughs> Once upon a time in a kingdom far away, there was a very beautiful and powerful queen. But war came and although the queen won, she also lost many friends. She cried and cried. I'm going to make a robot and have it work for me. Then I shall live alone in the palace forever and not make any more friends so I won't lose them. Beep, copy that. Working now, replied the robot, who then began running the kingdom for the queen. Some bad guys started to scheme. Where does the priestess come in? Ahem. <clears throat> the queen had a pretty and powerful priestess friend who couldn't bear to see the queen go on this way. That was when a traveler came to the kingdom. He and his companion were both smart and brave. So the priestess fought, egg, 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 they are agile and resilient. If they are willing to help, Paimon tells the story of the queen and the priestess, both of whom are distinguished ladies in a way that really engaged the kids. In the end, the lonely robot was still working out, but that's another story. Everyone was so awesome. Even though the traveler wasn't a, a distinguished lady, he was still strong. That's why I want to be when I grow up. Paimon sure you can do it, but if you don't behave and get lost out there, then none of that will happen. <laughs> Very smoothly, Paimon. Yes, I will behave and won't wander outside. What happened when you got lost before? I don't remember. I just went into the woods to go to gather herbs. Herbs? Yeah, Alfonso said there's an herb to improve Grandma's eyesight. He has trouble seeing. Th she has trouble. He has. Oh, Grandpa. He has trouble seeing things lately and can't even see people coming his way. So I want to help Grandpa. Did Alfonso send you? No, he wanted me to not wander into the forest too, but I wanted to help, so I sneaked off. Then I don't remember the rest. Nothing at all? Nothing. When I came around, I was already home. My brother said everyone was right, and know what I did was wrong, and I will never sneak off into the woods again. That's right, good girl. Speaking of the forest... About the mysterious creatures in the woods. I don't know anything about them. Wow, that was fast. 
What do you mean by mysterious? If I know what they are, they're not mysterious. If I don't, I wouldn't be able to tell you, sorry. That actually makes a lot of sense. But what Paimon wanted to ask about is round, plant like fairies. Round and plant like... Oh! Did that ring a bell, Suzabe? Uh, no, that sounds mysterious. Hmm. That's a shame, because Rana said she would love to know what an Arana Aranara is. Oh, she wants to know too, then... She does! Also, didn't the priestess in the story say, Ak, 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 don't be a tantrum for child who refuses to talk to others. Ak, ak, ak. Okay. The priestess and the queen are really great friends. But like how they trust each other, I think Rana would understand why I can say it. When I'm old enough to understand a lot more, I'll tell Rana and you too, but not now. I'll be old by then. <laughs> It's okay, I also age, so you'll always be more mature than me. Alright then, we won't ask more questions. Just be a good girl and don't wander around. Mm hmm thank you for the story. I love it very much. I'm going to be smart, pretty and strong, just like the priestess. Then I'll marry Rana. <laughs> okay, uh... Ah, it seems they know about the mysterious creatures but just don't want to tell us. Should we divide and conquer them? Should we get the adults to turn... Just read us a secret between these kids, yeah. Ugh. We're staying in Subaru for a while, we'll have time to look into it. Back, how did it go? Was it fun? I guess. It was fun, they told us a story, dragons actually don't eat people, Rana. Oh yeah, that's good to hear. I was worried a dragon might fly over you and eat you off someday. Oh no! Storytelling is kind of fun. I think so too. <laughs> okay, you should go home now. It's about time to eat. I also fat said, they ca said he caught good stuff in the water today. Come with us, Rana, and both of you too. We've got business to tend to, but thanks for the invite. I want to eat with Rana. I'll be there next time. Come, come on, you've got to go now, or Ayosa Fat is going to finish it all by himself. Okay, bye, Rana. Bye, you too. <laughs> Can I click, please? Okay, bye. <laughs> That's how kids sound like, I guess. Stay so around for a minute, Ayosafat. I want to talk to you. I'm concerned about you. The forest hasn't been the same lately. The animals are getting aggressive and more fungi have popped up. Same with the withering stones which kept, which keep appearing. Don't go picking mushrooms anymore, okay, IFM? Don't worry, I know we're safe and not safe. What's more, star shrooms are tasty and they give us, give you the energy to keep working hard. No, Granny Jihid and I are both worried. Promise me that you won't run around there before I figure out what's going on. Okay. That's a good boy, IFM. You be great when you grow up. All right, go eat with cows and others. Got it. I hope they grow up safe and sound. What do you think about these kids? Pyman's better. <laughs> I've seen worse. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a compliment? Yeah, I understand. Regardless, I hope they grow up safe and sound. My patrol is actually not done yet. I'll still go to check out the West End. I'll have a favor to ask. Traveler Pyman, would you mind coming with me? Eh, uh, why? I spot some littering sounds there with no one to check them. I'm very worried about kids wandering into one. Triple, and now that you're here, will you give me a hand with that? Please, though I have nothing to repay you with. A uh, piece of cake. So you will help? I really appreciate it. I don't know how I can make it up to you. You've done so much for me. Well, we're not going to ignore this need. Hmm, let's go then. Let's go. Get up from here, then go withering. Straight, well... Uh. I'm gonna get the teleport point over here and then I'm gonna end the video here. Cause I don't know how long this quest still goes. Maybe it's over after the withering so but I don't know. We can see. First of all, teleport point. I knew it! What is that thing? The seen and unseen. When three Lakshana creatures are activated using Electro, they will unleash a true sense pulse that may be able to display the location of certain hidden things. Okay. Oh god, my stamina is not gonna last. Hold up. I have to wait. Thank you. Oh, 
Here it is. Nice one, nice one. The quest log is confusing me. Leave from our version, go to designated location. You and Platinum put in a good amount of hard work to sort your stories into a version that the children might find interesting. Thankfully, they like your stories, although they don't seem to have told the truth about the mysterious creatures. This isn't the time to go into detail. Now go off round to clear out some withering stones. Doing this so the children of Primara can play safely after all. Uh, Part 1 is the question how long this will go. Uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna do this challenge over here. And we'll see, I guess, if we can do the withering zone thing. Collect dendro particles. Easiest cake. Thank you. Anyways, I'm. And all the more valuable. For I'm just gonna end it here and say, see you in the next episode of Kitchen Impact. Until then, it's just Sam. Bye bye.